Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum. Salam sejahtera. Selamat pagi. Good morning. Hello Malaysia. Hi everybody. I really hope everybody are enjoying and resting yourself at home. Well, do stay home and stay safe. My name is Architect Adrenta Aziz and I will be your moderator for today's session. And thank you to all viewers for joining us. For your information, this is the second series of webinar session brought to you by Malaysia Productivity Corporation, MPC, MyCure. So let me introduce you what is MyCure. MyCure is a simple methodology for cutting red tape bureaucracy, taking out the complexity and simplifying procedures towards more efficient and effective public service delivery. MyCure is a part of GRP initiative. And I can tell you, it's one of the government's initiative under good regulatory practice, GRP, in reviewing regulatory processes and procedures. MyCure is a program to encourage and equip government agency with the necessary capacity, tools, and guide to undertake their own regulatory review and administrative simplifications at their own initiative. Well, typically, it involves four phases. Phase one, defining the issues and problems. Phase two, measuring the current performance. Phase three, data and root cause analysis. And phase four, proposed recommendation and solutions. The uniqueness of my QO program, it is about reviewing the process requirements from the regulatory's points of view. The regulatories themselves identify and prioritize the my QO projects. It also focuses on administrative simplifications using tools and techniques such as Lean and Regulatory Impact Analysis, RIA. So what are the objectives of MyCure program? This program is to train and develop regulatory process improvement experts and also to enhance culture of using data in making decisions on when suggesting for regulatory improvements and also to encourage and support public consultation initiatives, and to reduce compliance costs and improve operational efficiency. So the overall goal is to eliminate unnecessary red tape and reduce the time and cost of compliance for citizens and businesses assessing government services, as well as reduce burden for both regulators and businesses. So today, we have our special distinguished guest, Mr. Sukri Hadafi bin Hamdan, who will be delivering his topic on out with the old, in with the new, is simplifying procedures that hard. Mr. Sukri will be covering the abnormalities of working processes in Malaysia and philosophy of value added activities, browsing the old processes and definition of zero waste operations and simplification is simple and we're going to have a very good uh, dialogue chit chat and virtual high tea Le allow me to to read about his biography to to introduce everybody here mr shukri hadafi is the ceo gemba solutions mpc lean management specialist and toyota kodawari instructor he is a member of associate of persatuan professional melayu malaysia and Associate Malaysia Productivity Corporation. He has over 16 years extensive experience in driving full spectrum corporate transformation, quality improvement and change management towards achieving learner processes as well as greater profitability. Well versed in adapting the Toyota ways towards enhancing businesses uh, operations and performance coupled with exceptional capabilities to train and instill performance driving culture into the workforce. Recognized as an innovative and charismatic professional with vast knowledge in productivity and quality matters. Appointed the first Kaizen instructor in UMW Toyota Moto to implement the Toyota service marketing standards in Malaysia, resulting in significant improvement in customer service standards. Before I pass the floor to our guest speaker today, uh, the viewers, to all participants, viewers, if you may have any question to ask, please click the Q&A icon at the participants column on the screen and you can post the questions there. 
We try our best to answer immediately, or if the time not permits, we shall answer them via email. So let's begin. Uh, Assalamualaikum, Mr. Shukri. How are you? Waalaikumsalam. And how are you doing? Good, good, good. Alhamdulillah. So I hope you yeah. stay safe at home, safe and sound. Yeah, yeah. Alhamdulillah. So far, so good. Uh, staying at home for almost one month. Wow, but, uh, very well. Very productive well. too. Uh, a lot of meetings. And uh, today, wow. actually the first time we're going to have this uh, online uh, discussion or online training. Hopefully, it's going to be a good session. Very well, very well. Make it more productive for everybody here. So I believe, thank you so much for your time that your topic today is very, very interesting. It's about out with the old in with the new is it simplifying procedures that hard there's a question mark so mr sukri so let's begin the floor is yours now you, you may begin now okay uh thank you and assalamualaikum and hello everyone i'm sukri here uh at this point i believe uh we here in malaysia have been uh, divided into uh certain clusters okay some of us are working because you are involved in the essential industries some of us uh, stay at home but when you stay at home there are two categories either you're working from home or you're not working all right so it's a matter of uh, productivity that uh being questioned yeah uh, in ourselves uh, during this MCO period but whatever you are doing I hope uh, each and every one of us uh, stay healthy stay positive and at the same time uh, being productive okay my topic today is uh, about uh, out with the old in with the new so when I say old here means uh, how we want to identify the processes that we are currently doing in work that is not uh, necessary, not value added to the customers, and how we want to transform it to the new procedures, or in other words, uh, the more simplified procedures. But the question that's always uh, being asked, or the questions that always uh, in our mind is that, how hard to simplify the procedures? in our daily routines yeah because uh, most of us are working yeah but uh, we are uh, basically being exposed to the processes at the very first day of the working day all right and then uh, is there's only two things that are going to happen yeah either you are looking into the process and improve it or you just be go with the flow in the process for so long okay so today's session is about uh, transforming a complicated processes you can see from the screen okay the one with uh, many flows inside it to the simplified ones yeah of course uh, it sounds uh, easy but of course you need certain skill or certain knowledge uh, to uh, make it simplified so today's session, I'm gonna touch about, I'm gonna touch these five uh, areas. The first one is the abnormalities of uh, working processes. Yeah, I'm gonna walk through with you what are usually the abnormalities that we found during right. the cutting and red tape programs. Yeah, and then number two, uh, let's together we define uh, what it actually it meant by the value added activities. Okay. Uh, we might question okay uh you are doing a value added activities or you are you are you are doing a non-value added activities but let's have a mutual understanding uh what is the value added activities is all about and then number three we're going to browse uh the old processes yeah? because uh, as this is a program under the roof of cutting the red tape we have done this program for the last four years with uh government agencies all right uh, so we have identified a lot of old processes that have been eliminated all right so i'm going to share with you on that uh, steps also and then number four is targeting the zero waste operation so 
basically this will be the the touch points of these uh, sessions yeah i hope you all agree with with, with the with the with the session flow yeah if not you can put it in the seat chat session um, okay Good. now uh I want to ask a question to the crowd that's uh, listening now. The norms, all right? So if you send your car for service, for example, how long does it take? Yeah, one hour? Well, no, Shukri, I mean it's subjective. Sometimes and it took one hour, two hours. Yeah, sometimes two yeah. hours. Yeah, but yeah. some of the cases, the, the car need to stay at the workshop overnight because they yeah. cannot complete true. it in a day. True, right? true. But the question is, are they really working on the car or they are waiting for something okay i think uh, if you go to any workshops uh, you also can can see uh, they only spend about uh, they only spend certain hours to really look at your car whereby sure. the remaining of the hours while you're waiting the car is parked at the waiting for reception bay or it is stuck there uh, nobody attended to the car attending the car so we have two questions yeah what actually the processes that happen in 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 between the the, the waiting uh, time and then we also have a situation the second one maybe the the the, the attendees also can can ask questions yeah? or maybe can can respond to this uh how long does it take for the discharge in wards <laughs> yeah you 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 are admitted in the hospital right and then come to the day where you can be discharged okay you are happy the doctor said yeah today you can be discharged but waited for one hour two hours maybe three hours you are cured the mamali yeah, <laughs> while waiting okay so, so I, I i don't think uh it, it because of the procedures yeah but but it may be because of uh, some non-value added activities that happen uh, while you were waiting Okay, so we're gonna explore on that also after this. Right? Right. And then uh, I'll give you another scenario. Eh? I believe uh, before MCO, uh, you have experience of uh, checking in and checking out of the hotel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is also another fast question. Eh? Uh, we waited so long, waiting for the check-in processes. Yeah, you already arrived at 12 o'clock, but you only go to the room at two o'clock. So two hours uh, uh, just waiting for nothing. And then uh, even after you check in, if you want to do, uh, after you check in, and you want to check out, also takes time. Okay, because I, be, I, I noticed now in the hotel, there are two scenarios. One, you can just drop the key, but there's still a hotel that required you to be around. Yeah. Okay, they ask you to wait uh, while somebody is checking uh, any, any issue with the room, then only they release you. But still, uh, that's a norm, okay? And then, uh, when we are doing, because just now it's more on our daily life uh, example, but in the cutting and red tape program, you know, we have approached many agencies of government agencies. So we, one of the, the most, the popular topic that we are doing is the application of license with our uh, government agencies. So, uh, how long does it take by record? Uh, we have uh, some application of license that required until 60 days, 90 days, and even some 270 days. Yeah. So we 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 have to look into this. Uh, what are the processes that inside right, the 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 application of the uh, license? And then this is the the, the fifth one. Maybe I can ask uh, the moderator. Uh, and yeah, do you have a experience? Do you have experience registering your kids to the, to the school? Oh my God, I can tell you Allah, I understand. Yeah, Very so uh, we, were, we were so excited uh, sending the kid for the registrations. But then there are four, five, six forms that you have to fill up. And most right. of the info that we have to fill up is the same info, our names, the IC. So maybe <laughs> the first two forms we are in the good hand of writing. But come right. to the fifth and sixth one, yeah, we just scribble it, yeah, because uh, we we start to realize why uh, why you are asking the same info in every forms, yeah. So I'm not saying that the the, the, the system is not good, yeah, but it just uh, per se, okay, the the perception that we got. All right, and right. then 
Okay, this is the the another one, the Shopee. Yeah, I believe now during MCO, many yeah. of you ordered uh, uh, item from Shopee. Even me myself, uh, I did order uh, kurma recently for Ramadan, and then I do uh, order uh, toys for my kids. Yeah, because yeah. they seems to be boring at home, so just to pick an assignment. But then when you start to order from Shopee. Uh, the the delivery or the response is different. Some can be delivered within one one day. Some can be delivered uh, in two months, and some not even uh, more. They 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 do not process. Okay, uh, the, the 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 status of the order stick there, like nothing happened. Yeah. So the response that is something that uh, involved or related to the process. So th so this is all the norm. Yeah, I'm just uh, taking you to this uh, scenario so that we're aware that uh, there are many things that we have been facing now that yeah. uh, involve uh, non-value added activities. And because of that, uh, we have been waiting or we have to wait for the service to, to, to complete. Right. All right. Now, uh, so typically in, uh, in the uh, working processes, yeah, uh, less than 30% of the time that we own a product or service is spent adding value. So you can see from the graph here, the yellow one is the non-value added, whereby the green one is the value added. Right. So this is normally happen in in uh, in uh, project. So when we are doing this uh, micro project or this cutting the rate project, we can we have a record uh, of. Uh, only 30 to 40 percent of the time is a value added activities whereby the rest is all waiting uh, seeking for approvals uh, moving the document from HQ to branch okay so all these have to be looked into right i want to uh, detail out yeah, what is this uh, value added activities is all about you can see that step or that particular step in the process is value added activities if it commit to these three uh, criteria. Okay, the first one, the customer is willing to pay for it. Okay, so as a customer, when you go to the to the say to the restaurant, definitely there are there are expectation back of your mind. Okay, you want to have uh, food, you want to have uh, drinks, you have you want to have uh, a good environment uh, or good table. So whatever you do towards these expectations is considered a value added activities because the customer willing to pay. But definitely the customer will not pay for extra plate that you have at the back. Or maybe they will not, they will not pay for any discussion between, two, between you and your staff at the restaurant. They just want to pay for the things that they want. Okay, so the first one is the customer willing to pay for it. Number two, you physically transform to the product or to the service. Okay, you are cooking the 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 the, the migo ring, for example. You are doing the roti canai. Okay, yeah. so all that is value added. Okay, and then the third one after you comply to the first two, when you do it right at the first time, meaning that there's no duplications, there's no first uh, first approval, second approval, third approval review. All right, so at the first time it's already completed. You need to check. You need to double check. Okay, so that that is the three uh, conditions. Uh, how if you want to uh, put that step as a value added activities? All right. Now, what is non value added activities? Okay, just now I'm just talking about the thirty percent of the work. So the seventy percent of the works that uh, normally typically we found, yeah, work that that consume resources, but it does not add value to the product or service. Okay, so. Maybe it sounds like, uh, no, we're not going to do this. But the real fact is that when we do the cutting the red tape programs, many of the processes that we found is non-value added because the customer yeah. is not asking for it. The client is not asking for it. Okay. Say, for example, you are, you are applying for a license. What you want is that paper, the license, so that you can proceed with your business. You are not requiring the meeting. You are not requiring the stamp shop. You are not requiring this. Uh, uh, whatever transportation from branch to HQ. So all this is not what you want, you see? but the process is there. And that process, that kind of process is more 
than the expectation of the client. But then don't 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 forget uh, we still have the necessary value added activities that need to be in these uh, processes. So, mm -hmm. example uh, is the customer contract or specifications, all right? And then uh, such in uh, industry standard like ISO 9001, there are many forms that we have to fill up, okay? Because this is world standard, okay? The government regulation that is something very interesting uh, in cutting the red tape. We are challenging the regulations. Yeah, because some of this regulation is is already there from from Mendeka from right. 1957. Okay, when when we we when Malaysia Mendeka, definitely Persekutuan Malaysia have to need to have the administrative part of the of the country. So we just do we just follow whatever regulation that may be given by the British Council and so on. But then some of the government agencies have been have reviewed it, but some of them or some of it still using the same regulation until now, even mm. though after the transformation of the uh, digital world, after uh, the upgrade of the IT system, we still using the old uh, regulation. For example, if you're applying for, for any online uh, applications, uh, which is uh, under the roof of uh, any agency of the government. You mm. can notice that you already applied the online, but at the same time, you still have to send hard copies. Why? When you ask why, the question is, yeah, because this is a policy. We need to keep the, the hard copies. So so yes. definitely this will, will, will make the, the, the process longer. Okay? That's and a good info you share, you share with that, Ashukri. Maybe perhaps you can, yeah. what, what's the, can you, can you go more detail about the what is the non-value added activities here? Okay, I, I will share with, with, with you. Thanks for the question. And yeah. in the next slide, okay, uh, this yeah. is an example. Yeah, I, I'm not yeah. uh, picking this from the sky, but this is right. exactly the the, the 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 process that we have eliminated uh, when we do the cutting the rate programs. Right. Okay, I'm not going to read all, but I'm just going to pick some of it. Okay, uh, waiting for the customers to come. Okay, or oh, you are reviewing the info. There are two, three parties when the document is at the HQ or at the branch when the, the when the, the, the customer uh, apply for the for the license, you review the info. After that, uh, okay, you do a stamp shop, you approve it, then you pass it to HQ or another department. That another department review the info again. All right. So after you review, it pass to another department. After you pass to another department, review again. All right. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, uh, what are you reviewing? What what is the item that re you review, or it just an SOP, or it just a KPI? All right. Uh, the KPI said, or uh, on the uh, starting from the first day you are doing this job, the previous uh, the previous staff who have already retired told you it has to be reviewed. So you review it until today without asking why. All right. And then you photo photocopy documents. Yeah. I think this uh, photocopy shouldn't be in our norm. Yeah, especially during this COVID, post-COVID, because that is a mode of transfer of that virus. Okay, but last time uh, we had to photocopy everything. All right. Uh, it's, it's like a, a culture. Uh, if you want to apply for anything, you start imagining. Uh, do we have to photo state anything? That is a, the default question that we normally ask. And become then standard operating time. Yeah, it mm. become a norm. Okay, and then standard operating time. Some of the some of the processes in the in the agencies or in the government or in maybe in the industry, you already set in your mind. Okay, the time to to do this is two days. Even though you can complete it in one day, you still wait for two days. Because <laughs> that is the standard time. Don't jump the gun. Okay. So with and and those other things that I, I'm going to touch further because you have a slide. Okay. I think the participant can read it. And then the next question that uh, we should ask: Why these non-value added activities exist? Why? Uh, it happens. Eh? Why it is there? So this this is also the the response that we got from. Uh, the, the cutting the red tape programs. Huh? First, the SOP never discussed. Yeah, I do have a business. Okay, 
from the day one i employed staff and then i asked them you just do your role so after five years we celebrate on the profits and then the next year we celebrate again in terms of the profit but then we assume that the process of the business is already there everybody knows their role but then actually as what being told by uh, yesterday's session by ir rewired if you do not determine the process of your business your staff will determine the process for you so in other words the staff is controlling the business because you do not micromanage okay you just assume everything goes smoothly and just look at the surface all right that's the first one and then some of it here is the big boss decision wow we have a boss where he said oh, I, I don't want to i want i don't want to hear any reasons i want that form to be filled up by all customers right yeah boss decision nobody should ask <laughs> all right and then some of it is the traditions it is a tradition for this company to stay late everyone should be going back at the five well, we have to stay oh. at, until six o'clock because that's a oh, tradition when, all work. <laughs> when you say like that most of the architects firm doing that <laughs> yeah that, that, that was you and yesterday you work at eight <laughs> yeah but in, okay so <laughs> in this uh tradition sometimes uh we we doing it for no reason you see but most importantly it doesn't value added to the customers okay and then some of you just want to see want to be seen busy i think for those who are working maybe the very good visual uh, judgment of your staff or of your colleague when you see many papers on the on the table oh this right. is a busy guys whereby there's another table uh, empty nothing on the table oh this is a lazy guys he mm. were, he he went back early every day but how mm. sure if you look into the productive or the value added activities that the guy with the empty table is less productive than the one with the uh, the full of papers on this table all right so right. all this is the, the the reason why this uh, non value added and of course there's another one is the government regulations i'm not saying that uh, the government regulation is not good or not practical or non value added but from our experience okay maybe we over interpret the regulations are then said so but we interpret it that way yeah there are many occasions that we we realize or we notice eh? when we ask them the the answer was uh, because it's regulation so show show us where 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 which acta or which uh, uh, section saying that you have to do that but when we cross check the regulation doesn't say that so right right it, it, it's somewhere in the tradition line that created that process okay i mean re now, refer to uh, that you agree, yeah? I'm sorry. Refer to that. From yeah. your experience, Yugi, from your experience, yeah. how how much government regulations can contribute to the non-value added activities? Yeah, yeah, that's very challenging questions. But uh, I would say, uh, when we do these uh, activities, uh, this uh, the flow. Uh, this is one of the example of uh, the flow. You you can see it because I just I just want to show the example of the flow. Right. When we do this flow. I would say 40 to 50 percent of the steps is complying. They do it because they want to comply with the government regulations. Right. So that could be the answer. But again, there are two types. One is is the real regulations from the government, and second, they created it. They overreact to the regulations. The regulation said there's only one approval. So. Uh, but they are doing it three approvals i see okay from the from the uh, pengurus to the terminal pengarah pengarah ketua pengarah everyone look at the same uh document and approve it i think mm -hmm. for those who working uh, during our executive days we have been given a format you see at, at the bottom of the format uh, done by whom checked by mm -hmm. whom reviewed by whom approved by whom so it's already in our mind on the day one of our working working life you see so mm -hmm. but all this is actually non value added if you ask the customers i don't think any of the customers will say i need it to be reviewed before you pass it to me no that is your internal inference okay all right now i mean uh, okay less, uh, 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 sorry yes. i mean i think because the micromanage thing sentiments you know i think i just wonder why why people keep continue to do this uh, non value added activities 
I just wonder why. Is it because of their mindset? Yeah. Okay, and I would say uh, because we are too competitive. We are given a key performance indicator by individual department. Okay, so sometimes we just concerned about the our department. The KPI said we have to we have to review uh, 400 documents in a month. So all the stuff uh, without looking at the other side of the wall, we just do whatever KPI is given to us. All right. At the end of the day, uh, based on the KPI, uh, maybe the one who are doing the non-value added activities uh, being mm. rewarded as a top performers. All right. So uh, this this could be one of the big reason why these non-value added activities are still happening in the organizations. Uh, it's right. not the, 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 the it's not a fault by the staff. Yeah, I, I would say that, but but it because it because of the the, the management we didn't sue, didn't micromanage, all right? Because for the staff, whatever task given to them, they will they will perform at their best, all right? And does yeah. that answer your question? Eh? Good, good. I mean, that's good. That's good to respond. Right. Is your opinion okay? Okay. All right. So, uh. Let, let's move yeah, to the next one. Okay, okay. now uh, come to the interesting part of this presentation. I, I want to make it easy okay, for, for each and everyone here. Uh, of course, there are many theories uh, behind these uh, non-value added activities, but I will just put it in the sense that how, what are the most uh, uh, processes or most uh, category that we eliminate throughout the four years implementation of cutting the weight tape? Yeah. Okay, the first one. The papers okay from the photo here you can see maybe this is a familiar view uh, mm. to most of us here there are a pile of papers on the table sometimes we wonder how does this guy perform his work with uh, many papers on his table and then uh, yeah sometimes people got stressed with the report that he has to do and on the third on the third photos it shows the uh, regalia is one of the company that doing the storage of papers you're paying for the non-value added activities that you are doing to store it right okay now the issue is uh, we have been uh, we have been uh, told or the culture that we are having here we always do reports and then we filed it and then after we filed it nobody reads we are doing it just because we feel like uh, it is it is required to do the reports and then before the report uh, before i complete the report my work is not end hmm. all right so uh, it's unread and then we also have a scenario of the rush reports whereby uh, our boss asks us to do a report urgently so it's good to have a report urgently because uh, the time taken is less. But then, how sure you are? Uh, there is no errors. Yeah. So when there is an error, that's considered a non-value added because it's not the first uh, doing it right at the first time. Yeah. Because normally, when you were asked to do a rush report, you have no idea, you have no clue what it is, all, what 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 is the report is all about. You just do it, pass to your boss, and then your boss will say it's wrong. Do it again, all right? Right. And then sometimes too much time is spent in the back, and then reporting is longer than act. Most of the people in the office are gonna be in front of the laptop, do the reports, okay? Mm. Do the reports. Uh, at the same time, maybe you chit chat with your friends. That's also non value added, definitely. And then uh, how much time actually you spend to act onto what you are writing, okay? So does it add value to the customers? That's the questions. All right. So the second one is the meeting. Ah, this is another one. Mm. Yeah. We spend too much time on waiting. Yeah. The research shows that managers spend 40 to 60 percent of the time in a meeting. Yeah. So when when the there are too too many meetings in the in the office, yeah, the real work only happen after five. Okay, because you already set your time but today, tomorrow I'm going to be in the office. So the meeting marathon, yeah, the meeting marathon will start from eight and finish at, at five. Uh, right. Then you, you you plan yourself. Okay, starting from five until seven. 
uh, I will do my work. Okay, I think now during MCO period, uh, many of you uh, commit to a, an online meeting. It's okay because it is during MCO. Yeah, we can't act. We can just uh, plan. It's okay. But how many of you uh, doing the same thing even during non-MCO periods? You keep on, you, you have a marathon meeting every day even though you have opportunity to act. Okay. And then uh, decision are made by consensus. When, when there are consensus, there are many, it takes time. Yeah, because actually consensus happen when there is no guides. Yeah. You discuss when there is no guides. Right? If you know that uh, this is the SOP or this is the spec, you don't need to discuss. Just follow the, the spec. But then most of the company, you do not decide on the spec. So you keep on discussing again and again on, on the issues that you should, you should have decided and uh, no need to meet. So to get everyone on board is also time consuming. Okay, during our uh, cutting the red tape program, we have uh, uh, this uh, meeting called uh, One Stop Center. They call it uh, OAC meeting. OAC. Yeah, they plan it once a month or twice a month. Yeah. Tiba-tiba during this meeting, one or two parties can't make it. And because of these uh, one two, and two parties, you can decide anything in that meeting. So the next, the next gathering will be another, another next month. So the, the applicants who are waiting have to wait another one month or 30 days. All right. So uh, this is the, 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 the issue with the meeting. I'm not saying meeting is not good. But uh, in fact, in, in most uh, Japanese company, they are uh, doing this uh, vertical meeting. Vertical meeting means stand up meeting. When you stand up meeting, you are the tendency of you to feel comfort in the meeting uh, will be eliminated. All right. So cut the meeting the most is 45 minutes standing and meet for 45 minutes talk only about important things whatever is already in the sop no need to discuss all right so that's number two number three the team yeah this is interesting part yeah uh, i'm i'm also doing a team building uh, activities or session with the group of course we promote a teamwork but again how sure you are if you look at the first photo how sure you are each and every member of the team holding the right cardboard, holding the right words, T-E-E-M-W-O-R-K, okay? Because even a good football team like Brazil, they have issue with the teamwork, all right? So not all team can come up with the solutions sometimes. I, I, I can give you one example when you do a cutting weight team. When they want to do this, uh, uh, we call it a site visit. It has to be a couple, not to say couple, a duo, two person. So I ask them, hey, why, why you need to be, why there must be two person for you to visit that, that, that site? Uh, the, the procedure or the SOP said we have to go two person. Huh? But then, actually, does it require two person? No, no, no. Actually, uh, it's only one person, enough. But another one maybe uh, can give a consensus during the visits. Why? Yeah. Does the visit require two percent or that two percent required a visit? So this is the question that we have to answer. All right. For all I know, currently we are in the MCO. Every day you are getting this uh, MKN notification saying about the, the current progress of the MCO. I think it's only done by one percent and you can see the impact. Everyone got the reach and it, 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 it gives a very good impact to the, to the nation. Only one percent. Send the, send the message and everyone got the, the, the impact. And of course, this is a value added activities because we are expecting an update every day, all right? So sometimes this teamwork, it works better in theory than in reality. Because sometimes we have a team trouble, different time in the team. And then when you have a team, sometimes there's a lack of ownership. Again, I want to emphasize, I'm not saying that the team is not good, but when you have too many teams in the organization working in each and every, every task of the, of the company is not good. Yeah. And some of you will say, hey, we're going to meet again. Uh, you, you have the same team meet at eight. Hey, we're going to meet again at three, the same members, uh, but different topic. Mm. Why? Okay. 
So uh, we just uh, so th there are three things. Eh? First is the this is the first phase of elimination. Eh? The first one you get rid of the paper. Number two, you get rid of the meetings. And number three, try to reduce the team. Try to reduce because some of the tasks uh, can be can be uh, done individually, and it it will be faster. All right. Precisely. Okay. Yeah. Like now, if 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 uh, I'm in the office, I may need an assistance to assist me in setting up the projector, setting up this PC, setting up uh, LCD. But when there is no option, I can do it alone, like today's session. You see, so sometimes uh, it, it works better if you do it alone. All right. Okay. Now, let's move to the to the next. Uh, uh, phase of hunting. Yeah. Once you have identified this target, yeah, the first three targets, really. so it requires a hunting season. Yeah. Uh, so because that three step can be eliminated uh, as soon as possible. But then the next phase of hunting, uh, it requires you to hunt and replace this for non, for non productive action or person. Yeah, you right. can't grasp a seed on the hard surface, that's why the photo is there. Yeah. So you have to make sure that three uh, item or that three step have been done, have been removed. And sometimes you might need to replace a person. Sometimes, yeah. Uh, not, 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 not to say that person is not good, but maybe you have to do some reshuffling because of the productivity issues. All right. So now, uh, I, I'm going to go to the next. Uh, okay, this is the outcome. Eh? This is the taken from our cutting the red tape projects. I'm not go. Mm. I'm not gonna go in detail of all the flow, but okay. uh, this is what we do. Yeah, when when there's a cross there, meaning that it relates to the first hunting. Yeah, so it may, uh, we may reduce it or improve or combine two process into one or some of it we eliminate it. Okay, so for those interested to this uh, cutting the red tape program, this will be the outcome of the the phase one hunting. All right, are we still good? And Okay, good, good, good. I mean, it's truly informative. All right, all right. Yeah. Keep going yeah, so on. So, yeah. if uh, Interesting topic. there's a question from the crowd, we can ask uh, from the notification button. Yeah, you can ask one from the okay. screen, yeah? Okay, now, uh, the next uh, phase that I'm going to share with you is about asking the right questions. Because if you keep on asking the same question to your staff, you're going to get you're going to get the same answer. But how you want to ask different questions? So this is what I'm gonna share with you. Okay, what type of question that you can ask so that you will get you will get a different answer. All right. So simplifying procedures is actually uh, easy. Yeah, it's really really easy. Okay, you don't need a, a textbook. You don't need a book to read right? because. Uh, it's common sense, okay? Uh, what the secret to this process improvement is actually to stop doing <laughs> stupid stuff. Yeah, yeah. Kasar sikit lah bahasa, but but sometimes uh, you need to learn in a harsh way. The stupid stuff here means when you when you stop the stupid stuff, all that is left is the perfections. Okay. So just now when when I draw the process flow if you are able to take or to remove all the stupid stuff or the non-value added stuff from the process then what is left is the perfect perfection meaning that it's only value added activities again i want to emphasize uh through my experience or through uh, the team experience in doing cutting the red tape we cannot we cannot reduce it uh, to 100 percent we cannot have 100 percent value added activities in the in the process yeah but uh, it's good ideally if you can cut uh, from 70 percent to 30 percent for example so 70 percent of the work is value added whereby another 30 percent may be the necessary non-value added activities all right so now the question is who who define the stupid uh, process who got to define it is it you yeah is it you or is it your boss or the woman who owns the company the boss or the man who owns the bank the one who gives you a loan and so on no 
it's not them. Okay, the one that will decide on the stupidity of the process is the customers. All right, you can see from the face here. If the customer is not happy with your service, that come to the first forum. I'm not sure he's not happy with the with the with the staff or with his wife. Okay, so right. that that is the, the the first forum. But if the customer willing, okay, if they are not prepared to pay for what you are doing, then it's fair to say it is a stupid process. Yeah, because. They much like short sneery, yeah. You just do it, but actually the customer is not asking for it. So I can say back to the topic: it is an always. Okay, if it is stupid, if it's not required by the customers, it is an always. So, in this syllabus, we say a non-value added activities. All right. All right. So now, okay. Previously. Uh, you have to really read a books. Okay, you have to find this uh, information on how to identify the non-value added activities. But today, I'm going to share with you uh, what have been uh, implemented by a company called Toyota. So, in Toyota, there are three uh, main figures that I think all Toyota's people will know. Yeah, first is the founder of Toyota, Sakichi Toyoda, and then his son, Kichiro Toyoda, and then Taichi Ono is one of the senior engineer that work with uh, Toyota. Mm. Okay. The good thing is that uh, all this uh, all this theory on how to eliminate the value added activities is created by Tachi Ono, the third guy. Okay. So that is the advantage of the beginner, you see. When because Sakichi Toyota and Kichiro Toyota have been setting up the, the company for so long, they have created many processes. But when Tai Chi Ono came in, he started to realize many things can be improvised further. And he is the one who, who published the book on uh, waste. All right. So today, uh, in a very brief uh, mode, I will share with all of you uh, what is the detail of the uh, waste, uh, the seven waste that they have found. Okay. Okay. There are seven types of stupidity, though they call it waste in this uh, by them yeah uh, kalau stupidity the japanese call it bagero lah kan takkan nak panggil seven bagero kan so, <laughs> so this is the waste yeah they call it uh, seven waste okay uh, okay this this is the waste yeah the first one is motion inventory waiting defect overproduction transportation overprocessing so um, yeah textbook words quite difficult to understand. So I'm going to put it in a very simple terms, how you want to do this. Okay. Mm. Okay. Of course, in, in the cutting the red tape program, we are doing a process mapping, um, not a complicated one. We are not using any software, but we just use the uh, post-it notes. And this has been transformed into uh, Excel format. So the target is to identify the non-value added activities so that you will have a zero waste operations. Okay, so this is the, the, the one of the example of uh, flowchart that we do. Yeah, it's not as complicated as uh, maybe like and you are familiar with the architects when you're drawing. Right? So that that is very detailed. Yeah, but this yeah. is just uh, understanding so that you walk through the process. That's the main reason. It's not the outcome right. of this flowchart, but you walk through. When you walk through, then only you realize, uh, hey, we have been doing the same thing over the five years. Uh, sebenarnya, uh, the process that you are doing, the another person is doing the same. Okay, but for the customer, it, it's only one product, but you are doing twice. Okay, so uh, this is the reason why we have to do this uh, process flow. Okay, now I, I'm going to go for the first one. Okay, I put it all in graphical so that easy to understand. Easy to understand, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the first one, people moving further than they should. We call it a motion. Okay, this happens because sometimes the office uh, that you are working with having a bad bad layout. Bad, bad layout doesn't mean uh, it's not nice. Yeah? Some, some of the layout is very nice, uh, like our Mister uh, Ken uh, architect. And sometimes you 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 put it in yep. a very nice uh, ambience, uh, office ambience, but. What most important in the process uh, management? 
it's not how beauty the table or the the setup is but how efficient it is to support the process you know we had uh, i i i do have experience uh, working with one uh, company uh, which is in the multi level uh, stories uh, layout every day there's one particular staff we count the steps they have to go to five floors for every project and every project and every month he's been doing about 30 projects so 30 yeah. times five five times uh, going up and down of the floors you if you calculate how many times uh, he need to go into the elevators and go yeah. uh, to, to complete his tasks okay so i'm just asking them why don't you you change that uh, particular uh, process that always deal with this particular stuff to be on the same floor so the manager said yeah we never thought of that can you see it so sometimes the office layout yeah because here in in malaysia sometimes we treat an office like our home you see like you have a smp of the place hmm. yeah uh you you don't don't touch my place i don't want to move this is the place where i i i start working i i there's, there's a many uh emo uh, we call it there are many uh, things that i i want to stay here i, I don't want to move all right so and then second one is the busy bee uh, busy bee uh, sometimes in the organizations you have people who always running here and there keep on running here and there holding papers and then holding phone talking loud so loud yeah but at the end if you look in, into the processor that she is doing is it a non value added or value added definitely if you is moving around with papers is already uh, should be limited in uh, my very first phase of uh, hunting tadi okay yeah. and then the third one is a messy workplace lah okay again this messy workplace sometimes is a norm for for our uh, working environment in malaysia so if it is messy definitely you're going to have uh, many steps because you are keep on looking for item uh, some of your report misplaced and so on yeah. so i have also shown some example here uh, one of the, uh, the the example of steps that we have taken out from the cutting rate program one of it the sending document collect document from for tested me yeah, this is on the step is it? looking for stationaries looking for document missing equipment locating an unsorted files so all this is uh, part of it uh, part of the uh, processes that happens in the in the uh, company that i approached before okay that's the first one okay number two uh, is the inventory okay all of stuff nobody needs okay sometimes we have too much of raw materials okay uh, in the company and then there's also work in progress uh, because we set the time uh, we work until nine to five all right so at five o'clock all wash hands so leave the item work in progress uh, it's okay we, we settle it tomorrow so all this inventory and then uh, finished products too many finished products which is not sent to the customers uh, we have uh, one agency one of government agencies when there's one room full of license so we ask them hey, why this license is here oh it's actually it's already completed but uh, waiting for the for the client to pick up did you call them uh, i have to check so when we <laughs> check with the staff who supposed to call them they said oh yeah actually i'm busy doing the visit just now i said the visit to two two person to do the visits uh, he's the, yeah. also the person who doing the visit. Uh, sorry, this month uh, we have full of visits. Our schedule is full, so I will call them next month. Huh. So you see, you know, this is a very non-value added activities that happen because mm -hmm. the customers is actually expecting for this product or for the license to be delivered to them because they want to start their business. Okay, but because of the working culture, okay, we we do not do it. So this is an example. So. Uh, if you look at the, uh, the 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 step yeah that we have taken out uh, order raw material to utilize racking sometimes because we have the rack kita isi the semua 
uh, in uh, right. most of our most of the business that I visited and approach uh, doing uh, 5S uh, when the stationary room or the storeroom is empty they feel worried uh, it's like they're not working okay mm. so order order not because of the demand order because to fill up the rack okay so uh, this is one of the non-value added activities right and then fill up form upon receiving the just in case materials you are receiving materials that is not necessary but you fill up a form definitely because that's a step you fill up a form so this fill up a form might be value added if the the item that you ordered is necessary but the, if the item that you ordered is not necessary, it's considered non-value added. You shouldn't be doing it in the first place. All right. So number three, cross-checking overstock inventory. Yeah. Ini lagi satu. The inventory itu is overstock, but you are cross-checking. For for no reason, uh, suddenly the superior asks the staff, uh, what are you doing today? Okay. Uh, if there's nothing to do, can you please uh, just cross check is our overstock or our inventory is a good in a good uh, numbers as compared to the system so this is also non value added all right so monitoring of overnight uh, work in progress okay you put a guide or put a staff to stay in the office pay overtime to look after item that is uh, not necessary or wip mm. okay takutlah takut hilang so you you assign someone to monitor so this is also non value added okay and then 5s exercise uh, you do 5s you do arrangement uh, you sort things that is not uh, necessary all right and then rearrangement of finished good uh, ini pun ada the warehouse uh, supervisor uh, because there's no demand mungkin uh, after post mco ni you can see this happening uh, you ask the the the, the warehouse supervisor uh, uh, help me to rearrange this warehouse uh, mm. why okay uh, so all this is non non value added yeah inventory so that's the second one okay the first one is motion the second one is inventory so the next one is uh waiting waiting uh, yeah, I waiting. Think this is, yeah this is the popular ones huh? just now and uh, yeah. wait, uh, you are waiting for me and then we are waiting for this uh, session to start and now i'm waiting for it to end mm. so we we uh, sometimes we are used to it okay are uh, wasting your time but what contributed in the company why uh, this waiting happens okay first uh, reason because of the imbalance of work yeah because uh, the, let's say you have uh, four or five staff in the company but the work balance or the approach or role and responsibility of each of these staff is not balanced so when this uh, one staff is already done his job okay then another staff may be still working on on something else so because of that uh, this guy have to wait all right yeah. so this work imbalance me if you are doing the cutting the red tape program you can see obviously when you are when you are drafting the the flow chart because the flow chart is based on the person so from there you can see someone who uh, seen visibly but in the flow chart his step is only two or three whereby the person who are you know empty desk just now is the one who having the most step in the process so <laughs> this is the one of the reason yeah of the imbalance and then number two the sop is unclear okay and then sometimes it's a quality issue the quality issue is not uh, the quality check, but that you do not know the spec. Okay, uh, you ask for requirement from the customers. You uh, maybe people are uh, the, the society is uh, sending application for a license, uh, the license application. You set a requirement, but internally you are not sure which one we can approve, which one we we shouldn't approve. Mm. It's all back to the judgment of the. Uh, ketua pengarah or the pengarah all right so this uh, is a, will contribute to the waiting okay and then of course another one is a long long approval okay the approve the the, the the flow of the approval too long okay all right so mostly uh, most of the uh, situation that we we encountered during uh, red tape 
the approval ni have to come from the first uh, person of the organizations and by nature the first person of the organization routine is full uh, normally he, he his routine is full of uh, meetings and then he need to go to outstation he need to launch many programs and because of that the applications uh, have to wait pile up on his table we are not blaming mm. him because the regulation said so yeah. yeah because the regulation really clearly mentioned that you have to be you need to be approved by the 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 pengarah of the organization so so this is the some of the processes uh, waiting for document waiting for previous or next process yeah like us lah kita nak start we want to start our work so eager so semangat to do our work but then we cannot yeah. start because waiting for the previous parties uh, to 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 finish his part then only we can start our work all right and then waiting for decision uh, we already done our part we send it to the to the boss but the boss tak decide decide okay so wait again all right so waiting for boss signature all right uh, because boss is a uh, uh, this is the interesting part is it uh, last time we keep on saying uh, no 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 it has to be a, a real signature if not they're gonna have issue with audit but now tiba tiba during this mco everything can be done online okay digital you don't need the signature it can be digitalized yeah. so again i want to i want to emphasize we overreact to the regulations yeah if it can be done it can't even be done now during mco because it's a government regulations all right so uh, this is something that we have to think about yeah, maybe after mco uh, even though after we can physically be in an office mm -hmm. we can start to brainstorm what are the things that can be done at home can be done without a meeting can be done uh, virtually all right so we can be more productive and then waiting for approval waiting for review and so on okay that's number three and then uh, uh this is something that i've just put in the slide uh, i think you have experienced this right you call cellcom uh, i'm not to mention cellcom like any of this uh you call them and then they they said your call is important to us uh, it will be with you again in seven to ten days uh, what do you mean by important if you come back to me after 10 days right so the question is what you do in that 10 days mm. uh, are we queuing up with other application or maybe it's a standard uh, it's a standard set by the company they will only look into your document maybe on the nine days right. day nine okay from day one to day eight is a is a requirement of the company just wait so, so this is all uh things that we have to look into all right okay number four is defect yeah things gone uh things gone wrong yeah so what causes this is the weak uh, quality control uh, wrong submission or ordering okay uh, when when people uh, applying for something in your organization or order something application you do not have right. a good uh, a good form or maybe you are asking too many info which the info is not required hmm. all right and then when there are too many info you tend to be confused you are confused with the request okay so when you confuse with the request and there's no quality gate the product will, will will still be developed and then at the end the customer reject it because it's not the spec of the customers of, of what the customer wants the sop is not clear and then you're also not sure what is the customer expectations yeah you are not sure about the customer expectation this is another thing that that might might uh, lead to this so some of these uh, uh step that can be taken out eh, that regards to this defect is second third submission when you do the cutting the red tape there are many cases where it requires a second submission third submissions right uh, i mm -hmm. do have experience recently uh, doing with the the construction permit uh, in in putrajaya uh, there are applicants that uh, just trying an error they send applications to the for the kementerian uh, for for kebenaran merancang they just send an application and then uh, trying luck because they do not know the exact requirement they just send whatever application and then they are expecting the third the second the third the fourth applications so why this happened because it's not clear 
we are not clear about the requirements yeah and then too many uh, or no quality gauge uh, rework incomplete info checking reviews approvals and the rejection so this is the 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 the, the step that we can uh, we should eliminate eh, when it comes to this uh, fault defect okay okay this is another interesting uh, things that we can eliminate from our working uh, procedures making more than you need okay uh, typically uh, we are seeing this to these uh, productions uh, for the manufacturing plant you produce uh, item that is not uh, necessary but actually this also applies to the service uh, industry okay when you're making more than you need first is the too many reportings okay the reports that uh, uh, you you do but nobody read it and then there's another one if you look at the second photo yeah. email to everyone uh, <laughs> i think by i think this might look familiar to some of you your email box is full but you don't <laughs> you don't read it not because you don't want to read it you don't read it because you know it's been cc to me there's no action required for me also okay but that is a culture when everyone send an email you send to every each and individual of the of the uh, office or maybe it relates to the teamwork just now so when when the email is sent to everyone who actually is taking action to it all right so this is our production yeah you are doing of course uh, currently you have no issue with the with the uh, data and yeah, maybe it's free but then the issue is with the the action after that okay mm. supposingly you only send emails to those who require actions who need to review who need to do the next steps okay and that imbalance work process so this this uh, might uh, relate to this whole production so some of the actions uh, or, or step in the work that we can remove yeah? the reporting send email for notification and some people they send email just to validate that they are working yeah and then moving excessive order of reporting you trash incomplete or error reporting and then you produce a just in case goods okay this this is an example of uh, the step yeah? so for those who are who are listening to these uh, presentations you might uh, uh rethink back yeah any of this step the one that i put in the post-it notes uh, yeah. that has been in your organizations uh, you should think during this mco period i uh, use this opportunity uh, to look into the processes uh, and try to question why this this uh, process is there all right okay uh, uh this is example uh, running the machine at full speed okay sometimes because of kpis again i want uh, the answer that i've given to you just now why people keep on doing these non-value added activities because of right. the kpis eh? it's already said uh, the production have to meet these certain numbers this month so full speed okay i don't bother uh, either it can be sold or not just do it uh, after that it's not my my responsibility and uh, that should be a sales department responsibility i've already produced you sell it okay and then utilizing manpower from nine to five Okay, sometimes uh, just because you are you got bothered when you see your staff not working, you tell them, okay, I want you to start the production. Okay, not to say that we shouldn't be utilizing the manpower, but utilize them in to do the value added activities, not the non value added activities. Overproduction is definitely a non value added activities. Okay, now uh, the last two. Okay, another mm. one is transportation. Huh? Uh, transportation is a bit different from motion motion is more on our movement the motion is the first one but transportation is when you move the things that don't need moving yeah uh, so the first uh, same example just now obviously out need more on your your motion the first one the second one is when you you need to transport you need to transfer the document yeah obviously out and then unnecessary reporting and then lack of understanding of process flow uh, you can see from this third photo eh, when we do this uh, process flow uh, and then we try to do the motion study you can see uh, these people are walking here and there uh, in fact if you, one of the study that i did with one of the hospital uh, the staff have to walk uh, 3 km in a day 
in the premise. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so that's good for for your health to be to to keep healthy to be fit. But now we are talking about unnecessary uh, movement. Okay. So when he walk or she walks, you you are not paying the customer not expecting for that walking. Yeah. But uh, it will delays uh, whatever product that he's doing or the services that he need to deliver. Mm. Okay, so this is one of the example that we do in the cutting the red tape program. Send report to HQ for approval, uh, print report and facts, and then postage of document to HQ. Uh, you place a report on the tray. If the tray just next to you, it's okay, but the tray is in uh, three kilometers away from you. So uh, every day you have to you send it to the trade and then carbon copy of application details. That's another thing. So for tested machines, I think when when these uh, uh, non value added activities can be tackled, I think the the photocopy business pool will be in the track. Yeah, because uh, it shouldn't we shouldn't be uh photo stating too many items now because we can it can be done online this mco is a very uh, good opportunity for us to test and i think it's effective yeah we don't need all these hard copies all right mm. in fact like today's session yeah uh, i i i don't need to to send this uh uh presentation to you all right we can just send it online okay we don't need to train it I don't need to go to the stationery shop or photo estate shop to, to photo set, which I used to do it for every training. But still, the take up is the same. Your expectation is uh, I delivered the, the content and at the same time, you have the record of this uh, uh, presentation. So delivered, right? Without having all this transportation happening. Okay. And then the, the, the last one okay, is over processing. Over processing is the same as over production. But overpressing is more on the is more on uh, the process itself. Okay, uh, one the, the the why this happened because of long process slow, and the duplication of rules. Okay, and too focus on department KPIs. Uh, again, I repeat, uh, some sometimes we just do things because of the KPIs set to us. Okay, we just uh, we we think uh, silo in our department. Uh, we do not look into what other departments are doing. So when we do this cutting the red tape program, then only we realized, okay, uh, actually uh, the other parties is doing the same role as yours, okay? So some of the steps that we have taken out, yeah, the revision, yeah, review one, review two, review three, okay, after we do the cutting the red tape, we just said not even one, no need a review. Do it right at the first time, uh, do the right form, Okay, initiate the right form and then ask only the, the right question or the right info from your clients and then we don't need the revision. Straight away, you can process it. And then the site visit, is it really necessary? Okay, prepare presentation for OEC meeting. Why you need to prepare another form of presentations? If you have the right info from the customer uh, in the very first place, you just bring that particular info to the meeting and present it. You don't need to do another presentations. All right? And then application requirements, uh, the sorting uh, sorting of the application. Uh, this is another another thing that I find out in uh, in uh, most of the uh, not not in the government agency that we have uh, deal with. Every time you have you want to communicate uh, to another party, even though in the same department, you need to do a cover letter. Why? Yeah, uh, you need to have a cover letter, even though it just uh, the department next to you. All right, so this letter, I'm not, I'm not concerning about the, the cost of the, the paper, but I'm concerning about the time uh, required to process or to do that letter. And mm. most importantly, it's not required from the customers. None of the applicants that are applying for license said, hey, make sure uh, when you submit this application, it comes with cover letter. No, this is your internal interest. Yeah? You've got nothing to do with the... Uh, applications uh, with with applicants and then multiple signatures. Yeah, so this is uh, one of uh, the other other uh, steps. Yeah? So I, I think that's that would be my 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 last slide. Okay, but I'm just want to cross check uh, with with all of us. Yeah, I taken mm. this from uh, the star. Okay, 
can life return to normal after COVID-19? Yeah. So there are seven actions that have been, uh, has been uh, taken or has been planned by the ministry. Uh, we have to continue to maintain strict physical social standing as a long-term lifestyle. Okay, this one. And then we have to using masks become com commonplace. Okay, cleaning hand and surface must be normative. We have to develop rapid response coronavirus team, availability of mass testing, capability, and so on. But I'm not, I'm not going to be uh, focused on this step. But what I'm trying to tell you is that after this uh, COVID-19, okay, if you look at what I've I've shown to you just now, the red one is the the first the first the first one. Remember the paper, the team, Correct. and the meeting, and then the the yellow colors is the the seven ways. So. Uh, previously, maybe it's a volunteer base. Uh, you you can do it, uh, or you can uh, you you can opt to not 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 to proceed with all these uh, non-value added activities. But after COVID nineteen, I I foresee it 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 would become compulsory. You see, uh, continue to maintain strict physical. You shouldn't have uh, too much meeting. Okay, you have to start to eliminate not not because of value added or non-value added, but because of the COVID nineteen, because of our health. We want to prevent the virus from spreading. You shouldn't have too many teams. Yeah, you shouldn't have too many teams. I put it there, and then the motions. And then using mask must be a common place. So when using mask, you have to actually not only use at a common place, you should eliminate people waiting. Right. They try to make it as, as, as uh, fast as possible so that the waiting period is less. So the process has to be strengthened. There shouldn't be any non 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 value added. It's so not worth for someone to get COVID because of non value added activity waiting for non value added activities. All right. Yeah. So cleaning hands, uh, surface. And this is a paper. Uh, paper is one of the item that can uh, commute this virus. Okay? So be, get rid of this paper. The inventory. When there are too many items, this will be. A uh, 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 mode of transfer of this virus. So try to eliminate. Don't keep your inventory for so long. All right. And then the team. And definitely, you want to develop a rapid response coronavirus team. You need a team, and this team must be really uh, workable. There's no. Uh, I mean, it has to be in a very good team, good dynamic, so that the rapid test can be done in a fast uh, mode. You see. So all travelers in the country should be screened. Uh, this is another thing. You just imagine at our immigration, even at recent, I'm not saying this country, maybe in another country, even to check the passport, it is a very long queue. You just imagine there's another step of screening each and every tourist coming into the country. So yeah. you have to make sure uh, the inventory of the item is good and then there's no waiting and then there's no over-processing. You just do necessary steps. Okay, do not ask tiba tiba. You ask uh, where where did you come from? Did you bring? Uh, yeah, all the unrelated questions. You shouldn't. Hmm. You should avoid it. Okay, we just ask the right question uh, that's related to the concerns. All right. So if you don't control this, then they're gonna create another issue uh, after COVID nineteen. So I believe yesterday, uh, KJ uh, together with our uh, uh, we said that we are going to be the first country that going to receive this uh, um, COVID-19 vaccine. You see? So uh, we have to support that with a good process in our country so that it can be executed well and then uh, so with that uh, I end my presentations. I have yeah, I mean, any questions in regards to that. All right. So okay. back to you, Anne. Okay, Shukri. I mean, uh, it's, I really admire your, your presentation and, and very informative. But I just wonder who is the best person to lead these changes? Okay, Anne. Uh, for me, uh, I, I, not, not my opinion, yeah, based on yeah. what we have did before. It is very yeah. important that the owner of the company or the CEO of the company or the pengarah of the agency mm -hmm. lead the changes. 
because sometimes if you if you if the if the leader is not interested to the changes the the staff do not have authority to change right they might disagree with these processes but then they do not have authority to change again one of the reason why these uh, non value added activities happens is because of the boss decisions i've already put in the slide so if the boss do not have this uh, changing culture or do not aware that uh, the non value added activities exist in the companies so it's very difficult to to overcome these uh, non value added activities it is easy but it requires uh, decision making so to answer you the boss of the organizations i mean okay related to to your answer i put here there's a few question on the on the screen here from uh, Mr. Jerry Shah Nizal Abdul Aziz, yeah. The question is: If we put effort for improvement of lean our process, but sometimes our thought management or higher authority, for example, government minister, secretary general, etc., is more superior in decision making. So, how to overcome these challenges? Okay, good question. By Jerry? Yeah, okay. it's Jerry. Uh, yeah, we do face the same concern. Yeah. Even when 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 I'm doing uh, this uh, consultation job in data management, trying at our level best to eliminate the value added. One of the big barriers that we have to face is the agreement from the the top ranked people. Yeah. But uh, to be specific in the cutting red tape programs, we are playing with data. Okay. There will be a platform that we will present all the impact if these uh, non-value added activities or steps uh, keep on uh, uh, we keep on doing it in the in the organization. What will be the impact? So we will show in terms of the compliance cost, yeah, how much does it cost, and then what will be the impact to the company, and then we will show a data. The, the analysis data of the uh, the, the issues and uh, the situation that's happening before. Maybe some yeah. of the data will show that uh, whatever process that we are doing is not uh, correlation to the performance of the company or of the organizations. So with that, uh, it will convince them and definitely but definitely we need a good platform, a platform to discuss with them. So the buy-in session is very important so that they are convinced that uh, every uh, this step should be taken out or the regulation have to be taken out. So I hope that answers the questions. I see, I see. So the second question here from Ms. Punita Nuknaidu. I understand that you have two questions here, but I will choose one question first because the second question is a bit longer to read and then I will prioritize to another question. So to be fair, I just read her first question from Ms. Punita. The question is how procedures in a profit-centric organization is compared against public service-based organization? Can I repeat the question again? Uh... The question is, how is a procedure in a profit-centric organization is compared against public service-based organization? Okay. So, uh, if you look at this, uh, the private-based company, the, 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 the customers or the person who decide on the value-added or non-value-added activities is easily defined. Yeah, because... Right. Uh, for the for for the norm of a business uh, basically they know what they are selling and they are very clear on the services the, on the servicing that they are providing to the customers so with that uh, uh, requirement or with that uh, situation it is very easy for for the companies to decide which uh, uh, process is right or, or value added and which is not okay maybe they can minimize it to the at a good level but then right. when it comes to the public services, again, I think it, it relates to the questions given by Jerry. Sometimes uh, in public sectors, uh, the demand or the uh, requirement from the customers is not, is uh, sometimes it's subjective. Yeah, there are too many 
expectations that they have to meet and then there are too many uh, uh, regulation that they have to comply and then right. to eliminate the regulation uh, in the government is not that easy yeah of course we can propose but then uh, there are several uh, layers that you have to buy in or you have to go through before that regulation can be eliminated so uh, to answer you uh, it is easier or easier for us to do the to eliminate the process uh, the, uh, the non-valued process in the private sectors as compared to the government agencies uh, we do have programs with uh, many government agencies uh, by records uh, out of uh, i think from 2014 until now we have been doing uh, about 50 projects of a category tip about 40 percent of it have been implemented yeah but uh, another 60 percent is still waiting for decision so that's how complicated as compared to uh, government uh, to a private sectors uh, throughout the program also uh, done by mpc under spbe uh, yeah. in that uh, in that uh, platform uh, you can see the success rate is higher because mm. uh, the decision making is uh, done by the the owner of the company and normally yeah. they are not uh, complying to the government regulation but they are complying to the need of the owner so yeah. uh, that that's a difference yeah so i hope that answer your questions Okay, cool. I think very well that. Okay, uh, Jay let's recap. Eh? You, you, your presentation did mention about the seven wasted of lean, motion, inventory, waiting, defects, overproduction, transportation, overprocessing. Okay, so one question from Ileana Abdul Rahman. She asked you, which one will offer most easy new norm to the organization out of seven? Hmm okay so uh this is what i've uh, always told the uh, the class that i've conducted before yeah so this is uh, one of the popular questions that people ask i think the most uh, effective or the most uh, effective step or waste that we have to eliminate first is the yeah. over processing because when you start doing this over processing Right. The other ways will start to happen. Okay. So focus at the overprocessing. Don't do things that is not required from your customers. So that will be my answer for that question. I hope it answered that question. Very well, very well. The next question from Louis Tiong, yeah. Who is the customer yeah, for a building as a product? The end user of the client. Oh, sorry, RP, yeah. Louis Tiong asked this. Who is the customer for a building as a product? The end user or the client? If they are two separate entities and their expectations are contradictory. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah. Very interesting question. Yeah, because uh, sometimes in this building, the expectation from these two, the, the owner of the, the building and also the, the another party is different okay so uh that's why when when we uh started any of these uh cutting the red tape programs uh, one of the very first step we need to get this uh, expectation firm all right so uh i believe uh, even though without uh without doing this uh uh, uh the, the searching of uh, value added or non-value added activities it is only a problem if yeah. uh, the expectation is different it's not only about identifying the processes but uh, you're gonna be stuck in terms of getting the raw material assigning to the contractors assigning to the vendors and so on so Correct. to answer you the the real the real customers for the building definitely is the person who pay the most for that particular building okay who right. is the main uh who 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 contribute the most to that particular building all right so you have to listen to this party definitely there are two parties and this another party is assigned by the the the, the first party so yeah. it always the person who who stayed at the end of the chain or mm -hmm. in other words the person 
who go to the bank and pay whatever services in regards to this development of the building. Right. right. And of course, I I, I still I, I think it's not uh it's not answering the question because the question is more about conflicting. But to answer yeah. this, both parties have to discuss. Have to discuss, be firm of the expectation, then only you proceed with the uh searching of the non-value added activities. Do not proceed with two ways, yeah. Uh, another one team with this expectation, another team with this expectation, because at the end of the day, you will duplicate the process again. All right. So I hope that uh, satisfies uh, the question. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough, uh, Mr. Shukri. Um, okay. The next question now from Ming uh, Min Wu. Eh? When a company is profit driven, they would operate as efficient as possible to maximize profit, but this is not the case for government agencies or civil servant or bureaucrats. As a private citizen in this almost totalitarian environment, is there any hope to correct all this wrong? Mr. Sukri. Okay, good question. Ming. Uh, of course, uh, to, to, to improve uh the the whole process uh, in the government is uh, a long business plan uh, we need a very good uh, strategic plan but what we can say what i can say uh, by record uh, we have been approaching this uh, uh government agencies since 2014 all right mm. and then uh what we can see what what, what i can uh, share uh the, the the challenges is because the the, the government uh, staff or the, the person who work with government they are used to uh, the processes that is non productive all right i I'm, I'm not say all yeah but I, i'm talking in regards to the non value added activities that i presented just now right. so uh, to answer you uh, because uh, by record i already mentioned just now 40% of these, 40% uh, of these projects uh, have been succeeded, and then they have been implemented. Even some of it have been uh, uh, been very effectively carried out. I, I give you one example. Yeah, our our immigrations. Yeah. Last time it takes so long. Yeah, but currently we can we can get it in a day. So that is one of the improvement that I believe is uh, possible to happen. Yeah, but trust us, trust MPC that uh, things are moving towards that because uh, again i'm not I, I i'm not saying uh, we have to be blessed with uh, covid 19 but <laughs> i think with this scenario uh, there is more and more valid reason for us to tell or for us to educate uh, the the public sectors that actually think things have to be done fast and then uh, we have to stop uh, looking into the traditions that we are doing and uh, we have to benchmark uh, many of these uh, uh, organizations that already succeeded. Uh, the team from MPC also have done uh, study missions to UK and to other countries in Canada to look yeah. into how they are doing it and they have a solid uh, uh, roadmap to, to overcome all this. All right, so uh, don't worry, uh, Mr. Who, who, whoever asking the questions. We are on the right track. Uh, just be patient. Uh, the government is changing. No, 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 no. The government is uh, going to the new era, and then uh, we we are we are doing our part to make sure uh, uh, things are getting easier to deal with the government. Yeah. Right, right. Okay, uh, very well, Tashukri. So, any last word from you? Because we're going to end our session now. I need to know what is your advice. Uh, I mean, what is your opinion towards your your papers today, your lecture today? Is there anything? The last word from okay. you now. Okay. Okay. Moving forward uh, from this session, I hope uh, because we do not know how long this MCO will be extended, but uh, my suggestion to all the business owners to all the ceos uh, or even the staff that are listening to this talk make use of this uh, grace period to brainstorm on your 
uh, working processes that you used to do in the organizations. Right. And then from there, uh, you can start to uh, discuss based on the guideline that I've already given to you just now. Eliminate it. Okay, because uh, this is the best uh, opportunity uh, for you to look into the processes because most of the operation has been stopped. Uh, the, the things that make you busy or avoiding you from looking into a process is currently in the pause mode. So uh, use this opportunity to look into the processes and then hopefully after COVID-19, we're going to be more efficient and then uh, you're going to be more productive and then it's it going to make uh, easier for you to, uh, the, the, the work procedure is going to be easier and all of us going to be a, a good, a better nations in future. So I really hope uh, that will happen. Uh, stop complaining that this uh, COVID is uh, making our life. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, yeah, so I think we should stop complaining. Yeah, one good example. Yeah, sometimes uh, I still wonder why uh, people here uh, in my place still queuing for this uh, at the toll. They do not want to buy a smart tag or or touch and go. Mm. Why? Uh, but after thinking hard, and even sometimes I interviewed some of them. Not, 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 not I stopped the car, but I'm asking mm. my friend who's still doing this session away because they do not have time to buy because they are so busy with the daily routine. So if you take that as an example, so now is the best time for you to improvise whatever things that you have in your company and try your best to make uh, it as uh, simplified as uh, you can because it's very easy, my friends. It's very easy. Yeah, that that's, uh, would be my last word, Mr. N. <laughs> right, right. I mean, such a wonderful day today. I mean, we can take this uh, MCO and all this pandemic is a blessing behind the scene. Well, Eric, thank, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Shukri. So for anyone who wants to download the slide, you can uh, click the link there. And then we would like to end this seminar by showing the last slide, please, Mr. Shukri. So there will be the next session. Uh, can you press the next slide when you want to show the, the, the flyers, the next slide? Uh, oh, wait, wait. Okay. The next, next slide. Okay. Uh, is that I think I need your help? Oh, okay. No slide showing. Ah, okay, there you are. So, dear viewers. Okay, yeah, that's, that's it. Okay, thank you. So this is another session on the 29th of April on Wednesday. We're going to start at 11.45 in the morning. So MPC MyCure Bytes would like uh, how to present is the next topic by our presenter, Mr. Kabir Ahmad Mohammad Jamil, Managing Director and Principal Consultants of Kabira Consultant Group's uh, KCG with this topic, Malaysia's National Strategies for Simplifying Administrative Procedures. And the moderator is our speaker today, Mr. Shukri yeah, Hadafi. So, so that's your, your role after this. And thank you so much, Mr. Shukri, for your time and in such a valuable yeah, thank topic today. Thank you so much. So, dear viewers, we will end this seminar and then we will see you again everyone on the next session by GRP webinar series and I really hope see you all again and stay safe everyone for all the Muslim I would like to wish you uh, Selamat berpuasa, Selamat menyambut Ramadan so please stay safe yeah and then stay healthy so should be your role the next session okay stay safe everyone happy Ramadan bye okay right thank you so much Assalamualaikum farewell Thanks, Ed. Bye. See All you. Right.